Zoomers be like, I love Valorant. Streamer plays Valorant. Zero viewers. Zero chats. Zero follows. Zero subscriptions. Zero pin messages, zero dopamine, zero neural activity, zero metabolic activity, zero ATP generated. Stream length, 22 and a half hours. Make it make sense, man. You made it up? Yeah, but it's like there's a nugget of truth. You must construct additional pylons. Dude! We should bring back r slash gaming humor. Humor has advanced too far too fast 10 years ago the funniest joke was like remember when the priests in age of empires 2 go nowadays the i don't even know how to explain it like what what is the most popular joke on the planet right now amongst the always online i just can't with this hell site today like variations of that that require a hundred hours a week of online digestion just to get it Skibbity Riz, so true, so true. Hey, librarian, I don't know if you're here yet. What's up with all the VTubers posting about their trips to Costco like the same way that Marco Polo wrote about venturing to the East for the first time in European history? Like they're giving like anthropological journal entries of like a place that 11 million Americans go at least once a week. They appreciate it. I'm glad because the thing is, let me tell you, you know what we call people who go to Costco? Costco appreciators. The only people who don't like Costco are the people who don't go. And then sometimes they're like, I went for the first time and you were right. It's kind of sick in there. Little busy. Everybody knows it's busy in there. And the people are not uh, using their carts in a way that is conducive to help the flow of traffic. That's for sure. But you're like, you know, why is it so busy? It's like Disney World, bro. People like going there. Thoughts on the plane reclining discourse? Plane reclining this. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why I thought of like an airplane doing a, a wheelie at cruising altitude. We already know. We, we, we solved this one 10 years ago. It's I don't recline. I feel like if you're under six feet tall, you should not recline. But if you recline... There's a couple of things to keep in mind. The first thing is you recline slowly. You push the button and you ease yourself backwards. You don't push the button and then yeet it back to full recline as fast as possible. People got laptops. They got tray tables. They're resting their, their head on the tray table. Like you, you can annoy them mightily. And just recline like a couple degrees. You don't have to de recline like, you know, the 20 degrees that they let you recline. Just start with like a, like a 10 degree recline and then see how you're doing. Just ask them. Yeah, but I mean, like, that's what we should do. But let's be honest. Nobody talks to each other anymore. Nobody talks to strangers anymore. You see the, all the discourse on TikTok that was like, I can't believe the Trader Joe's cashier tries to make conversation with me every time I'm there. <laughs> and then the echo of the response to that, which is like our social fabric is completely eroding because people are afraid to make small talk with the grocery clerks. That being said, I'm being hypocritical because I have said the exact same thing. Not with grocery clerks. I don't mind doing the, the checkout small talk with the grocery clerk. But I hate when you're paying for your food and then the server comes over and goes like, so do you have any plans for the rest of the day? That time I'm like, we don't know each other. It's sort of something about in the grocery store line is like, or when you're checking out of the grocery store, it's like we're having some kind of rapport. But at the end of the meal, when they hand you the credit card machine and they're like, are you doing anything else today? I'm like, we don't know each other. Also, I said this in the Discord. By the way, there is no punchline. I, was at, I dropped my daughter off at a class at 8.55 a.m., Went to the grocery store at 9.10. If you've never done this, I recommend it. There was nobody there. Now, that's just an aside. That's just a life pro tip. And also the drive. Oh, my God. Dude, people are not waking up early on the weekends. It's amazing. But I, was, I put my groceries on the conveyor belt. And it's just one of those things that happens. The, the cashier took the divider from the person in front of me. And then she kind of like tossed it. She didn't place it nicely. 
she tossed it over my groceries to land it on the conveyor belt and it hit a carton of blueberries that was at the end of the conveyor and that thing popped open like a jack-in-the-box and spilled all my blueberries all over the conveyor belt and I said I'm just gonna go back and get another carton and she said that's fine but I could tell the vibes were off for the rest of the interaction you know, like normally it's Sunday morning. She's like, oh, you know, what are you going to get up to today? And I'd be like, oh, me and my daughter are going to bake some cookies or something. But she wasn't saying anything. She just like, bag. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. She didn't say, how are you going to pay? She just said like the total. And I was like, oh, I have a membership card. And she's like, okay, what's your phone number? <laughs> and then you answered. Yes, I did. You're right. Yes, I did. I know what you're trying to do, and I will not do it. What was your answer? My answer was my phone number. 2003, 749 million views. What is Seven Nation Army? Nope. Hmm, okay. Oh, drums and bass, oboe, French horn, brass ensemble, voice cover. I mean, I don't know it immediately. Wait, unless this is The Reason by Hoobastank. And the reason is you. Oh, you left me hanging there. Okay, oboe. Ah, your love's got me going so crazy right now. Got me going so crazy, so crazy, your love. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, dude, the oboe really ties that Beyonce track together. I, things I never thought I would say. It took me all six for this one? Really? I mean, dude, this went, this came out when I was in like ninth or 10th grade. It went crazy. They were still playing it on prom night. Oh, dude. We, me taking piano lessons, be like, like, li dude, they're really banging on those keys, huh? Oh, man, okay. Dude, they're hitting the keys a little too hard, but I, when the music takes control, I understand. I got yesterday's bandle too. I don't remember what it was, but I got it. Ah, it was, yeah. It, I didn't get it until number four, but it was born in the USA. Never noticed the bass is so ass in Born in the USA. What are you talking about? I mean, you know the bass from bandle is not like the actual bass in the song, right? Like, this is not what Crazy in Love sounds like. Like, that shit's not going to number one in 37 countries. It's not kickstarting the solo career of one of the highest selling female artists of our generation, okay? This is going, this stuff you hear in like a, a restaurant that's going out of business in two months. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Probably still my favorite uh, Beyonce song of the seven I know. Low bar? Not really. She's got some good ones, man. She's got some, I mean, of the seven I know, they're almost all pretty good. Countdown's pretty good. Halo, she's got, a, she's got an incredible voice on Halo. It's not really my tempo, but she's, she's an amazing singer. Single Lady's pretty good, too. That's true. How much would you pay to watch her live? I feel like you, you're well-versed in the trap question, D.L. Riga, because I would not pay what it costs to see her live. But I would... Because what, what I was about to say is I would pay like 150 bucks to see a Beyonce concert. I think that... Half the people are going to be like, what the hell, that's way too much. And half the people are going to be like, that's an insult and we're going to kill you. I'm not going to pay the, you know, $1,500 resale fees on Ticketmaster to see Beyonce. But it's the Poké Doku Master Puzzle. I can do... <laughs> I don't know, man. I can do some of these. I think I can get at least three. Legendary Water. Easy. Kyogre. Legendary Steel. I'm going to say that's Reggie Steel. Legendary Flying. Okay, I want to use Rayquaza for Flying Dragon. Okay, and then Legendary Flying. 
let's just call that like a Moltres or something. Okay, we're zooming, bro. Steel Dragon. Water Dragon is Gyarados. Hang on. What? That's water flying, maybe? Flying ground doesn't make sense. Steel ground does make sense. Metagross. Metagross has Earthquake. Earthquake's a ground move. Metagross. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> I thought we were going to perfect the grid, man. Water dragon should be easy. Like half the dragons are water. Is Dratini water dragon or is it just water or is it just... I'm just going to be real with you. We're not getting flying ground. It doesn't make sense. Steel ground, I'm thinking of like Agron, but I don't know if Agron is a ground type. I might be a rock type. All right, I still kind of got my ass beat, but <laughs> there's probably a high score for us. How is it not... Like, I'm, I'm kind of stunned at the Gyarados one. But I guess Gyarados is water flying, even though... Doesn't he have dragon tail or something? Gyarados is flying water. That's a pain in the ass. And then water dragon? Dragon knight is like dragon flying or something, right? But dragon... Dragon air? I thought you catch him in the water, right? He's blue and you catch him in the water. Pokemon is legit kind of dumb. I don't want to get... I already got the Final Fantasy XIV uh, nerds on me right now. I don't want to get the Pokemon nerds on me as well. They know my weaknesses and they have same type attack bonus. What's funny is that the Final Fantasy XIV nerds, it's like the one standard deviation into the nerdiness who think they're good at the game. They're like the peak, or maybe it's the trough of the Dunning-Kruger graph where like competence and uh, confidence are diametrically opposed to one another. Those people are very upset with me for making a joke at Final, Fa Final Fantasy XIV's expense. The people who are actually good, the Mr. Happies, they're like, you got it half right. That's pretty funny. You need to play Final Fantasy XIV to learn how to dodge this. Final Fantasy XIV players love to be like, oh, it's the hardest game of all time. And then you watch someone do a raid and the boss goes like, hey, 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 hey. And then like a big line appears on the ground and 30 seconds later, the line gets engulfed in fire. And then they're like, see, the thing is you can't stand on the line when the fire comes out or you'll die. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> they don't know. You can't make fun of me. Have you ever had Korean barbecue with Mr. Happy? I don't think so. I've had Korean barbecue with Mr. Happy. I can say whatever the hell I want to say about Final Fantasy XIV. I watched Koji Fox sing that Final Fantasy metal song once at the concert, and then they were like, the concert's an hour long, but we only had 37 minutes worth of music, so they just sang the same metal song again. You haven't suffered like I've suffered. I've been in the trenches. It's not stolen valor. We only got two right... Kind of stunned. I, I thought Morgan Wallen would be up there for sure. Isn't he the, the country guy? Not try this in a small town, but the guy who was like number one on the Billboard Hot 200 for 35 weeks. I don't know him either. I just know that he was part of a controversy and then like America united to put him on top of the charts. But then again, I guess 50 year olds don't really use Spotify. Think more globally. Yo, D.L. Guiga, why do you think Bad Bunny's up here? Don't even get... I was about to go nuclear on you, D.L. Guiga. Were you on the ride today? D.L. Guiga last night, 10 p.m., be like, nice stack, goaded with the sauce. Thanks for put a, putting a Camilla Ramon ride up there. D.L. Guiga at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, I'm only going to do the first 40% of the stack. What happened, man? Don't worry about the Matt Wilper 75-minute power zone endurance. It's not going to hurt you. There, is, there was a part where he told us there was going to be uh, an interval out of the saddle. And then he started talking and he forgot to call the out of the saddle. And then he said, out of the saddle in 20 seconds. And then he said, never mind, I missed that one. And I was like, no problem, buddy. Now we're in the saddle for like the next 19 minutes straight. My quads are killing me. But it was still a good ride. I, st I, I bookmarked 
and I click the thumbs up on it. Bro said, think more globally. I put a K-pop star on here. Just tell me who's Brazilian here, the Uguiga, so I can, I can click it and then you can be vindicated. Think more globally. Oh, I picked someone from Asia. I meant someone from the other part of America. You motherfucker. Bro said, think globally. Literally every artist is from the continent of North or South America. Actually, I think every artist is from North America, right? Kentucky, Puerto Rico, Scarborough, Mississauga, Mexico. And bro said, think globally. Think globally. Diogo, bro lives in Chicago, said, think globally. How about you think about how your pizza looks like a globe because it's too freaking tall? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him good, man. I thought I was cooking with that tweet, too. That was like, I bet all the pepperoni haters shut up real quick once pizza got invented. Then I got fact-checked. I got, like, community noted. Pepperoni was actually invented in 1910 after the pizza. But it did get people to say some insane stuff. People, so A couple of people, I'm not going to put them on blast by name, but a couple of people said pepperoni is actually better off of pizza than it is on the pizza. You wouldn't catch me saying that with my identity tied to it, but okay. Like, I'm pretty sure that at least 75% of world pepperoni consumption takes place on pizza, but you do you. It might be like 90% for all I know. <laughs> it might be 98%. I feel like anytime I see someone buy like a pepperoni log from the grocery store like lunch meat or something it's like when i see someone buy a carton of cigarettes like i can't believe the grocery store is still allowed to sell it it should be a controlled substance but we don't need to get into that by the way i'm done with college football as a lifelong college football fan they lost me i will never spend money on college football merch again the college football playoff is a damn scam bro listen of course michigan's got to be in their number one undefeated beat ohio state okay number two washington i i personally thought michael Penix jr was going to fold during the uh, game against bo nicks the pack two championship game but he held it together and, and he won okay Best of, best of luck. I'm a Huskies fan. Huskies till the day I die, okay? Number three, Texas. Sure, they pulled out a big win this weekend. No disrespect. But how on earth does Florida State not get in when they're 13-0 and and they won the AAC? It doesn't make sense, bro. Yeah, I know that their quarterback went down, but at the same time, the team is not exclusively the quarterback. You got to put them in the fourth. They earned it, bro. They earned it. It's ridiculous. The SEC bias is insane. Nick Saban rizzed up the college football media pros. You will not catch me watching college football ever again. And that pains me because it was a big part of my life. Can you explain what happened? Nah, it's funnier this way. After starting for a year in place of an injured Tom Brady in New England, Matt Castle spent four seasons as the starting quarterback of what AFC team? The Jacksonville Jaguars. That's wrong. <laughs> I was so confident. In 2012, third baseman Chase Headley won a gold glove silver slugger and the league in RBIs while playing for what National League West team? Chase Headley, great baseball name. I'm going to say that this is the San Diego Padres. That's correct. <laughs> Are was other, other teams in the National League West? Los Angeles Dodgers, maybe? That's the only other one I could think of. Otherwise, I, the only division I know is the AL East. Because as a Canadian who watched the Blue Jays in the mid-2000s, it was just taking turns getting bodied by the, uh, the Yankees and the Red Sox and occasionally the Orioles. And then you're like, oh, at least we're better than the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And then they became like the greatest franchise of all time for like five years. Geography. Kazakhstan is very close, but only two countries border Mongolia. <laughs> Do I love barstool trivia? Hey, how many shoelaces did Adam Vinatieri tie when he kicked the game-winning field goal at 2.07 a.m. in overtime of the AFC Championship game 1996? And then it's like, name a country next to Mongolia. Okay, I'll say Russia. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Russia. Celebrity mashup. This is Samuel L. Jackson's face.
And this is Viola Davis's, the remainder of Viola Davis. Oh! The celebrity mashup was not easy. I, dude, how, come on. It is a little embarrassing that 74% knew who Blake Bortles played for or whoever it was, Matt Castles, and then only 70% knew that Kazakhs or Mongolia is south of Russia. And then they always say stuff like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to know the location of every country. No, but like Mongolia is a pretty big one and it's surrounded by two enormous ones. It looks like a little Mongolia sandwich out there. They're like, Mongolia, if you've ever looked at a map, Russia, Mongolia, China is like 70% of the surface area of Asia. Like, you got to know where that is, man. Viola Davis is at the opening ceremony for the pharmacy conference today. What a coincidence. It was, uh, they probably planned it like that. That's so, being a celebrity would be so funny. Can you imagine like making some movies and then they're like, we want you to be the keynote speaker at like the Florida real estate convention 2023. You get paid like $150,000 just to like show up. I would say yes to everything. I, I, I would be there no matter what. Weren't you the keynote speaker at that video game conference? No. I think fucking John Romero was the keynote speaker or something. I just happened to be there. And like eight people came to my talk. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Letourneau. And I'm going to give a talk today. And the focus is it is for those of you on the production side who are involved in making games or marketing games, or maybe you work at a publisher or you work in games PR how to get your games into the hands of some of the biggest influencers and some of the biggest individual gaming personalities that are out there right now. My company paid Ryan Reynolds 250 grand to come and talk to us about generative AI. Money well spent. Money well spent. I imagine everybody learned a lot. And then like three weeks later, they were like, we have to lay 8% of you off. Sorry. No, no, no. The Ryan Reynolds stuff happened. That was a different budget. There's two different budgets and they get sorted out at like the, the start of the year and they don't talk to each other. They, that's different money, okay? Don't be mad. Don't be mad. <clears throat> oh, I'm so back. Too good Greek yogurt. 12 times 5.3 ounces. Let, uh, hang on, I'm just looking. 150 gram cups, four pounds of yogurt. Let me think about this because it's always like, I got to figure out if those are single, they must be single serving containers because there's two grams of sugar like they if there were two grams of sugar oh but it could be two grams of sugar per serving in a big tub five ounces be like i mean it's not it's not the same as a fluid ounce was 150 grams being canadian and i'm gonna own my own country here you might think that it makes you well versed in the metric system and imperial and it does for length like I could tell you what something is in miles or what something is in kilometers. But with weight, I'm like, I don't know what a pound is or what an ounce is <laughs> or what a kilogram is. Like if you're like, oh, it's 150 grams. I'm like just looking at my hand like, I don't know. What is 150 grams? It's like four slices of lunch meat, five slices of lunch meat. Okay. That's probably a single serving cup. 12 single serving cups of yogurt. Mm, it is. So it's Greek yogurt. I'm going to say you get a little keto tax on this, but I think it's going to be pretty cheap. I honestly think this is going to be like $8.99, maybe even a, a little above it, but I'm going to start there. Let's go $9.99. Let's go $10.99. I'm a little embarrassed of myself. The price was $10.99. Okay. Pretty good though. Pretty good. My teacher taught me that a gram is equal to one paperclip. You know what my teacher told me? A, a drop of water is one milliliter. That shit is not true. Like, I know that maybe I'm getting too uh, semantic, but the, a drop of water is the volume of the drop. It could be one milliliter, or it could be like, you could have a liter drop of water. It just depends on the size of the drop, bro. You could have a liter drop of water, absolutely. If, if the weak nuclear forces are keeping it in, the, in a drop formation, you could not. Dio Guiga, why don't you stick to telling me about Campbell Harvey, okay? You really left me hanging on that Campbell Harvey reference last night. I was afraid. You thought Campbell Harvey was going to get you? 
He's got shooters. I understand. He's, I don't know if he's won a Nobel Prize. He probably won like Maxim Magazine Economist of the Year a couple times. Sometimes you hit too close to home. Oh, just because I know that Campbell Harvey, uh, as a university student, published that paper that showed that uh, an inverted yield curve was always a forward-leading indicator of an incoming recession within the next 18 months, except for uh, this time. So now he's pivoted to being like a huge Bitcoin guy. I, I'm not even saying like he's wrong. I, I didn't get my PhD at Northwestern University in macroeconomics or whatever. I'm just repeating his own positions back. And you're the one that's judging. Walt Disney, 215 milli. Action adventure fantasy, 2016, December. Listen, could we rattle off Marvel movies from 2016? Probably. Like we could just embarrass ourselves and say Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh, man. I was so close to just like, I don't have time for this. Let's just pick an actor. Still pretty good. 44th. I'll take 44th. Allied, just I, a blind spot for me, for sure. It's like movies about racism. Glory, Jackie Robinson, Hidden Figures. I honestly thought Do the Right Thing was to, I guess Malcolm X. Yeah, movies about racism. Hey, um, Pipino, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Black biopics. Okay. I never would have gotten that. Well, I am a Cine 2 Nerdle expert. By the way, I'm saying it. They're biopics. Biopics is not, it doesn't sound right to me. Biopic is like the way that the word should sound, in my opinion, and I'm willing to fight for it. They're biographical pictures. Yes, I know. But biopic sounds a lot better. Biopic is like it's too many stops and starts. So you ever see someone jogging? When they get to a stoplight, they keep their legs moving. That's biopic. If you put your hands on your knees and go, <gasps> that's biopic. It's some, biopic sounds like something you'd pick up in dead space. Original platform Nintendo Switch. Skip me? Oh, um... Action Adventure? Is this Luigi's Mansion 3? It is Luigi's Mansion 3! Okay. My daughter's been watching these uh, Mario Party videos on YouTube and they crack me up every time. Because whoever the YouTube channel is, they have modded like Mario Party 9 to put uh, like... Mickey Mouse and Elsa and Grover and Cookie Monster and Elmo into the game. And then the videos are always called like, Elmo wins every game, Mario Party 9. And then she goes like, Daddy, look at this. And I'm like, what the heck is Elmo doing playing, you know, Pikmin Panic or whatever the mini games are called. And he does not look in keeping with the themes of the game. Like he, he does not look like a Mario character. And you know, there's some stuff I'm learning about YouTube kids, too. There's a, a guy, he is like, this shit drives me crazy. I'm not trying to say I'm making better content than him, but you can be the judge. <laughs> it's like a middle-aged man that is doing like a let's play, but he doesn't talk at all. All he does is make faces. So he'll play like Mario Party, and then like whatever happens, he just goes like... And he's got... 573,000 subscribers or something like that. I'm like, dude, it's so easy. The man's a genius. He's, and I, I'm not saying this to be ageist, but he's got the hustle figured out. He's like at least 45 years old. He's not dressed up. He's not telling any jokes. He's not doing anything. He's just sitting there like looking like a dad going... That's my next, my next stage of evolution as a content creator. It's crazy. You'd have to stop talking. Yeah, I know. I'd have to do it during my downtime or something. <laughs> so I can hear Kate laughing up there. I don't know if she's laughing at me or laughing at something else, but it feels good. Van de Kamp's Grocery. This looks like the 1950s for sure. 
I would love to, it does look like it says dick pic down here. <laughs> Don't you hate taking a dick pic in 1953 and you got to like stand still with your boner for like eight minutes so the exposure time can actually work? Pun intended, I guess. And then you're like, when you're done with that, can I have it back? It cost me $250. You got to take that shit, get it developed. It's Freaks were way freakier back in the 90s, man. Nowadays, click, click, click. I got it all uh, on my digital SD card. Back in the day, if you were going to an orgy or something, you'd take a photo on like a Kodak, bring in a film canister to one hour photo. There would be like a 19 year old working the photo booth. You'd be like, they say, okay, see you in six days. That's crazy, man. You had to be like really committed back in the day. I would love to listen to a podcast about like the supply chain for a 1950s grocery store. Like how on earth in, in Peoria, I think this is when I go to my grocery store. I'm like, they're not selling 10% of these fucking cakes, but they have to have every, because if you go to the grocery store and you're like, oh, I really wanted like a Nanaimo bar cake today and there's no Nanaimo bar cake, your ass is never coming back. So how does this shit work that they got... They're making like a hundred apple pies, a hundred pecan pies, a hundred peach cobblers, a hundred birthday cakes like every single day. How are, how are they doing that, man, in a town of 10,000 people? The cake consumption can't match up. I guess they just throw out a lot of food, but like, that's why I'd like, a, I guess a purchasing manager is kind of important. Let's say 1956, 1972, what this shit is Peoria as hell, bro. This is 1972, are you kidding me? This is how I feel whenever I wear my, um, what do you call it? My sling bag. I always feel like a, like a little kid that's got like his passport in it or something like that. You, brother, you got to put one arm, like it goes over your head and then one arm goes through. So it sits like this. You can't be rocking it like... This is how my mom used to travel. She used to put like all of her money in a, in a little pendant on a necklace. She's like, oh, I think there might be pickpockets in Brockville. Relax, mom. It's the same Kingston, Brockville, Belleville, Gannon, Ockway, Smiths Falls. It's all the same people, okay? Dude, he is wearing it like, a, like an apron. This is uh, San Francisco, 19... I'm going to say post-German occupation of Norway, or are you just Norwegian? Like the hat is German, but the buttons are kind of screaming Norwegian here. So I think, I think that the German administration in Norway was like 1940, maybe 1941. But this looks, it looks earlier than that. Or it does, I don't know, let's try. No, it's 1907. <laughs> Now we're talking. Dude, it sips. It's actually sips. You know what's crazy? First off, great starter home. Secondly, this is how people used to spend their lives. And I'm not saying like, what a bozo. I'm saying like, dude, I kind of think that they might have been better off back then. Like got home from work, probably out there like hammering steel with a mallet for 10 hours. He said, you know what I want to do? I'm just going to sit outside. I'm just going to sit on my chair. I'm going to look at something. Watch the world go by. I believe this is a colorized photo of the late 1950s. Or 1950 even. That's fine. Photos that go insanely hard. I'm just going to say it. This guy nailed it. This guy nailed it. Everybody else, I think they must have skipped practice. Because, like, they got great... You're doing okay, but you don't have the same kind of... Uh, the pose just isn't quite right. This guy is, like, almost falling off of the thing. It's French, which makes me think... And maybe this is just the Tunisian flag. No, no, no. This is not the Tunisian flag. This is Algeria. Mm, it's, they're speaking French. This is not, not going to be Libya. Maybe it is Algeria. 
I don't know what the Algerian flag looks like. I should. I feel like it has some green on it, though. But the Tunisian flag has like a crescent moon on it, right? So let's say this is Algiers. Circa... It looks very recent. Let's say this is 2019. We're here. 2013, you were six years off. This is Morocco. Okay, fair enough. I mean, this, this shit is busted. It looks like the Cybertruck crash test footage. Maryland, 1923. That's a nice hint. I don't even want to say it. I don't know if this guy's alive. You know what's annoying for me? Um, why doesn't the Discord GIF keyboard have the insane video of Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders trying to kill himself? You know, the one that always gets posted on Twitter that's like, you know, uh, oh, Victor Oladipo after he didn't sign the $120 million contract with the Pacers. And it's him going like, ah, and then just like punching the wall and ah, like, what, why don't, put that on Discord, man. This is Baltimore, Maryland, 1924. They need to get their next, uh, their registration. A group of boys standing around a broken Chevrolet in Washington, D.C. Okay. D.C. plate, noob. Americans are so annoying. Europeans, I'm giving you your time in the sun. Join in. If you don't know that this is... Because like D.C., you, I see D.C. in a thousand different parameters a hundred times a day. You have to know that it's the District of Columbia to know that it's District of Columbia. You know what I mean? It's not like when I see ACDC performing, I'm like, these motherfuckers are from Washington. There, it must be Assassin's Creed, Washington, D.C. Done dirt cheap. You know, you have to know the context in order to know the specificity, too. Meanwhile, I ask you to spell Alberta and you started with like an H or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but Canada is not as important. Bro, literally, you live in Indiana, okay? I get that you live in the United States, but not one of the good states, let's be honest. It's one of the states that Peyton Manning put on the map. It's one of the states that Marvin Harrison put on the map. It's one of the states that Bobby Knight put on the map. You got college football, I'm just saying. You're the one who fired the first shot, by the way. Bro didn't know a 1923 American license plate. You better hope there's no Canadian guesses. Oh, you didn't know that that was Glenora? That's the Glenora Ferry, bro. It goes from Kingston to Picton. Okay, well, like, this is literally D-Day, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it certainly looks like the start of Saving Private Ryan or Medal of Honor Frontline. Just be smart about it, okay? So that's like around here. Me to my French taxi driver, where at uh, US Dieppe, thank you, okay? And then 1940, December 7th, 1941, it's 1942. No, I always think that it's 1942, but it's in 1942, 1942, sure, 1942. 19, oh, 1944, I always get that one wrong. In Normandy. Why did I put that shit in Dieppe, bro? <laughs> You know what it is? It's that Battlefield 1942 has ruined my knowledge of when D-Day is. For some reason, D-Day for me is always Battlefield 1942. And then Dieppe, I think Dieppe is like a, it's a Canadian World War I thing. I just got some neurons crossed. Don't even start, to, I said some neurons crossed. Librarian said some. Librarian, you're welcome to post your time guesser scores. I'm sure if they did VTuber time guesser, you'd get a perfect score every day, like Chibli and OSRS guesser. Otherwise, like, little bro's never eaten a cookie. So I'm a little bit concerned about your broad knowledge of the world, okay? Including 21st century history or 20th century history, okay? But anytime you want to put your nuts on the table and post your own time guesser, unfiltered with 8,000 people watching you, by all means, okay? Otherwise, stick to eating three Subway footlong sandwiches and clipping the best parts of the stream. Wrong is wrong. Yeah, but you, when you get the wrong answer and your teacher gives you a zero, doesn't stop you from going up and arguing that you deserve a half mark because your heart was in the right place. That's different. That's different. It's about me. Yeah, I know. Dude, are you seeing this? Somebody's getting banned from the, the egg carton right now. I'll tell you, there's, there's controversy in the egg carton because for the last few days on the endurance leaderboard, there's been one user who has output like more... Well, I mean, I, maybe it's already happened. No, there it is. Okay, 
Yesterday, in 72 minutes, they put out 1,800 kilojoules, which you may not have, um, like, a, uh, you know, it may not have an anchor for that. Let's just say second place put out 30 kilojoules less in almost twice as much time. And, I mean, I put out, like, 400 kilojoules less in twice as much time. So they were getting people sussing them out a little bit. They also hang, let's see what the, the community said here. Holy cow, but this is the most... The, the times when the Peloton community talks the most is either when someone says, how high should my seat be? Or like, are we going to kick this fucker out? How do we... <laughs> how do you kick him out? I don't, I don't understand. I don't really care if he stays in. I don't think he's legit, but also if someone wants to uh, like cheat on the Peloton leaderboards... There's two ways to look at it. You could say, let's kick this guy out and maintain integrity. Or you could say, this is a good lesson that we should all be racing against ourselves, not against unverifiable output from strangers on the internet. But also, I have a vested interest in the leaderboards being deprecated. Because I'm on there two hours a damn day. And then people get their bike and then they show up for like a 20 minute low impact ride and blow the doors off me. And then they're like, look, I got the gold medal on the leaderboard today. And I'm like, buddy, you don't even know what it's like, okay? It's like you showed up to the Nathan's hot dog eating contest and ate one hot dog faster than Joey Chestnut's like 73rd. And you're like, if you just scale that out, if you just scale that out for like another like 15 minutes, I would be the greatest eater on the planet. And I'm like, you don't know, brother. You haven't even touched your lactate threshold yet, much less for like 11 days in a row or whatever. I probably will not be watching Kong X Godzilla, but I did like the video of them running where someone said, why are they running like Mega Man drops November 7th? Hang on, did you see this? Multiple fruit recalls in Canada due to salmonella risk. The agency has identified Malachita brand cantaloupe as the likely source of the output. No, that ain't me. I, don't, I'm, I'm, I mean, I do like cantaloupe, but I have not eaten it recently. I'm so glad I don't eat fruit. Hey, before we do, Sep, let me check out I Was Poisoned real quick. I thought they had, in the most polite way possible, why does I Was Poisoned attract people who don't know how to write? <laughs> Natural selection? You don't have to be stupid to eat at Taco Bell. You just got to be driving, right? Taco Bell, Marietta Highway, Canton, Georgia. I went into the Taco Bell, ordered the same thing from two days ago before, which was the value meal taco and five-layer burrito, and I think a chalupa for five bucks. I only ate chalupa and taco Mountain Dew Baja Blast. I eat the food I left and put five-layer burrito in my pocket for the movie I was going to see. In about 20 minutes into the movie, I automatically started vomiting everywhere and my face was burning and felt like I was going to pass out. Thank God I was the only one in the theater. Bro, they must have been seeing the Marvels. Oh, I knew something was wrong and tried to head home. Was so sick and about to pass out. Had to call ambulance and was taken to the hospital. They said I had food poisoning. I've been eating at this Taco Bell since 1991, which equals 31 years and have never had this happen. But it did and it was absolutely horrible. Bro shoved the, the burrito in his pocket for the movie later. Respectable move. This didn't happen? I don't know. Like, what's crazy? I, I believe most of these, but also, I think that it just shows you that human beings broadly are not very intelligent. Do you know how many times the I was poisoned description says like, um, this is the third time I've eaten this and the third time I've gotten sick? I got sick from some form of gastrointestinal bug last weekend I completely changed my my meal flow I'm never ordering from that pizza place again I actually ordered from Papa John's you know how much it embarrassed me to do so the shit that people say about Subway bread you should be given that vitriol to Papa John's why is the bread so sweet man in Ireland that shit would be called a donut that being said I'm not playing around if it was the pizza from like last Friday that gave me whatever I got that made me super sick, then I'm a Papa John's man for life. Also, I'm going too far into this. Pizzerias, okay? If anyone watching this owns a pizzeria, if your pizza's good, and then I go to your website, and it says you can order on Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, SkipTheDishes.ca, I'm never using your business. 
I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. I'm not paying the inflated price, the convenience fee, the, the dasher fee, the, hey, the software engineers get 18% of this even though they didn't even have their knuckles in the dough. You can catch me going back to the 90s, bro. You can catch me going to Papa John's. You can catch me going to Domino's. You can catch me going to Pizza Hut because the price of the pizza is the price that it takes to put it through your door plus a tip for the delivery person, okay? Instead of like the pizza is $18.99, by the time it gets to your door, it's $41. It doesn't make any damn sense. And then they've got the audacity to say, we didn't print profit this quarter. Fuck you. How much did you pay your C? How much did you pay Montel Jordan for the this is how we do it Uber One commercial for the Super Bowl, you motherfucker. I am thinking about getting, uh, going a little bit Midwest core, if I may say so, though. What is Midwest core? I think I'm finally at a place in my life where I think I may invest in, uh, I hate that it rhymes, but I may invest in a vest. I feel like I now understand why, when I go to the United States, everybody, every man between the ages of 30 and 60 is wearing a long sleeve shirt with a vest and a baseball cap. Because I, I like being warm, but sometimes you wear a, like a winter coat and you're sweaty, man. And every time you move your arms, it goes like... So I think having something that like warms up the trunk but leaves your arms free. Like, it's not like you got garbage bags down there. I think I'd be into it, man. Are nine dogs easier to take care of than one dog? This is an insane question. Speak on that. I'm not, I'm not opposed to in a little bit of insanity, but how would nine dogs be easier to take care of than one? Oh, it's a slime bit. They take care of each other. Can I tell you, not, not to pivot off of the slime bit early, but I've always wondered when people are like, I can't explain it, but NL's kind of germicoded. And then the Twitter algorithm served me a clip that was like, imagine watching Germa stream high and then he's sober and says this. And he was saying like, um, I'm serious. Think about that. Imagine if aliens could, didn't have like, like video or photo evidence of anything. They would be so freaked out. I, you tell an alien, you stand right there, alien. I'd like you to, I'd like you to sing the alien national anthem, and they're like, quack, 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 quack. and you, and then you show them, you videotape them, and you show them doing that. They're gonna go, <laughs> and their head's gonna fucking explode. You're literally showing them a memory that they had. You have burnt that into a physical medium. How many CBD gummies did you have? Zero. Imagine aliens didn't have photographic evidence. Like imagine that they were like us, but they never invented the ability to like capture a moment. And then you told an alien to sing their national anthem and then played it back for them. It would blow their mind. And I was like, all right, I get it. Yeah, I'm a little germicoded. He's kind of spitting. And all, every one of the comments is like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? And I'm like, listen to him. He's talking about what he's saying. If aliens didn't have videos and you showed them a video of themselves, they would lose their minds. They would be like, how did you put a moment inside of a box and then play it back to me? That was the quickest illustration for me that I was like, I, I, I get this guy. I totally get it. He was like, whoa, he must be super high. He's just, you know, he's got an interesting question. It's a thought experiment. Whoa, double slit experiment? How high are you right now, Enrico Fermi? I know he's not the dude with the double slit experiment, but I don't know who did it. Bro, don't even bother doing the experiment. You know it's just going to be two bands of light. Dude, you know light behaves like a particle sometimes in a way. Well, you get the idea. Rutherford. Fucking Bohr. I don't know. Got any springtime travel tips for BC? Springtime travel? Got any springtime travel tips for BC? Got any springtime travel tips? Springtime travel? Got any spring... Tra time travel tips? Are you okay? 
I don't know how to time travel. You're thinking of Doctor Strange. It's easier than traveling in the winter time because you don't need winter tires. You could pretty much go anywhere, I think. I mean, I don't want to, don't quote me on that. I don't want you to get caught in like a landslide or something like that, but I think you're pretty much good to go. I'm going to a military base because you said I could. It's Canada. They probably won't kill you. You might get barred from entering the country ever again. I told you, right, that when we went to Hawaii, we tried to go to the um, Pearl Harbor Museum. So we just punched into the navigation. Keep in mind, we're not from there. We punched in Pearl Harbor Museum, and it was like, here, just take this bridge. And then we went across the bridge, and there was a military checkpoint, and they said, ID, please. So we just handed them our passport, and they were like, what about military ID? And we said, oh, we're just trying to go to the museum. And they were like, they had to go talk to a dude that was in the other booth. And then he was like, you can just do like a turnaround here. You got to go to like the visitor center. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I guess we tried to do like some international espionage or whatever. I was literally just trying to get to the museum. Why is there a museum on the military base? It was, it was nice of them. They didn't kill me, which is great. <laughs> That happens all the time when people try to visit the facility I work at. It's just, I mean, it's almost like they didn't design the military base for tourism. I'm, I'm being self-aware when I say that, but I was like, damn, you could understand the confusion. There's literally like eight Pearl Harbor museums and then seven of them are just like over here and you drive to and one of them is inside Area 51. How easy do you think it will be to write a 10-page research paper due this Thursday? That depends. Are you in high school, ergo 10 pages in lo is long? Or are you in college, ergo you're like, how am I going to trim 50 pages worth of material down to 10 pages? Because there's a big difference there. It's pretty easy to fill 10 pages. Take it from the guy who talks for five hours a day about nothing at all. It's really substantially more difficult to... Trim it down. With chat GPT, 10 pages is nothing. Um, we don't have to get into it. It's fine. If you want to use chat GPT. I was talking about it with the Discord a little bit this morning. Listen. Hey, it's the Weasel Pigeon. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. We all got sucked up into the AI momentum 2022, 20, early 2023. We were like, oh... Uh, hey, Dolly, spit out an image of Steve Harvey running away in the back rooms. And you're like showing your friends, hey, look, it's what if Steve Harvey was in the back rooms? He'd be like, ah, you know. And then like it's been 11 months. If you're still posting. And please don't take this as a personal attack. This is just one man's opinion. But if you're still posting AI art with like fucking what if a celebrity was in the Hunger Games and it all looks like super like high gloss Clash of Clans-esque like mobile game iOS logos you gotta read the room you gotta stop it looks so bad man like it's not like I'm jealous like AI is gonna take my job or whatever whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen I don't really have control over that I'm just kind of on a raft that is riding the tide you know, but like if, if you're posting it and you're like, look at how funny this is, you're like so far behind the times. You're like the last person in the group chat that's still sending like uh, Coney 2012 or jib jabs or something like that. It's just don't do it. Maybe one day it'll get there. And but like, I know we've talked about this before. I'm over the uh, and it's the Wessel Pigeon. Thank you again. Thank you. I'm over the. Uh, you know, Trump and Joe Biden playing Fortnite together. That's, that, that's my chug jug, Joe. Joe, Joe, that's my chug jug. You know, what makes it interesting for me is not that it's like, what if Donald Trump was playing Fortnite? Because that is not that funny. What's funny is when some motherfucker who sounds nothing like Joe Biden can do a great Joe Biden impression. Because you're like, there's art involved in that. I feel like there's like a, a disconnect. And I, I appreciate that AI has illuminated something for me. For me right now, it's only art if it's made by a person. Why would I care if a robot that could do anything 
could like write a script for a cartoon. It's like this bullshit idea that there's like an objectively best television show just waiting out there in the marble to be chiseled out by chat GPT-7. No, no, no. It's that the human beings discovering something about the experience of being human or about like a cool spaceship going to Mars or something like that and then conveying it to other people is where the interest lies. It's not like you're just like, oh, this is the best show ever made. Robots have made like writers obsolete. As soon as the robot starts making it, it, it loses half of the appeal for me. That's, and it only applies to art because I would eat some lab-grown meat. You know, it's not like an animal has to suffer for me to enjoy a steak. If they start making cruelty-free steaks that taste great, and they're not $150 each, which they will be probably, but I would check it out. But art is a different story. Humans have to suffer for the art to have meaning. If there's no suffering baked into the art or no relatable human experience baked into the art, it's just a, a Xerox copy of another person's art that the robot is approximating. It's not art anymore. It's Owl City versus the Postal Service, okay? For me, just for me. But they sound almost the same to the layperson's ear. But Ben Gibbard, I think, went through some shit and he invented that voice. And then Owl City came out with Fireflies when that motherfucker was like 17. He hadn't been through shit, man. He hadn't been through shit, okay? He never got divorced from Zoe Deschanel. I wish I had things to do on the weekend. Just have a kid. It'll, it'll fill your time up, I promise. Oh, but if I had a kid, I wouldn't be able to watch uh, the four-hour H-Bomber guy video within the first three and a half hours of its release. I understand everybody's got priorities. Me, I'm going Amish mode on the weekend, and I, I think it's good for me. I, I semi-told them I baked some cookies. I, I hinted that we baked some cookies, but I did indeed bake some cookies with my daughter this weekend. But I had like this romanticized idea that like she would love baking the cookies, but she basically didn't really vibe with it at all, which was fine, because then... She, she vibed with eating the freshly baked cookies right out of the oven, and so did I. What kind of cookies? So, I, I mean, listen, I know what I'm dealing with on the internet. I'm, I'm insulating myself from the roast. We didn't go out and buy flour, brown sugar, white sugar, butter. You know, I, I, that's fine, but it's also more work than I was willing to do. I went out and I bought cookie dough. <laughs> I was hoping to get like a little Christmas... Uh, you know, like those Pillsbury pre-made cookie dough logs that you then slice and they have like a Christmas tree or something. Um, they didn't have those. They only had like chocolate chip cookie dough, but it was still really good. They still, that's a little secret for you. It turns out it's still tasty. No wonder she didn't care about baking. You barely did anything. The fuck, bro? What'd you do with your daughter this weekend, motherfucker? <laughs> I hung out with her for 14 hours. Oh, you didn't small batch bake your own custom cookie dough recipe. Fine, fuck me, I guess. Childless motherfuckers when parents take one shortcut? Well, you're the one who chose to have the kid. Don't you know that uh, J. Kenji Alt Lopez has an incredible chocolate chip cookie recipe and all that? Okay, whatever, man. I was at work on, on Sunday. Then shut your mouth. You weren't in the trenches with me, bro. I just, I, I did look at the uh, chocolate chip cookie dough recipes and then I saw that it was like flour, brown sugar, white sugar, butter, vanilla extract. And then it was like, you pour this stuff in a bowl, you crack the eggs in it, you mix it up. And I just said, you know what? Not today, maybe next weekend, maybe as we, I mean, it's only, it was December 3rd on Sunday, you know? We don't need this. If we're going to do holiday baking, we can do that in the 20th to the 28th sort of corridor. That's when things really start to amp up. We got to leave ourselves a little capacity at the top. It's like, you know, I watched Home Alone and I watched Home Alone 2. I haven't watched 12 Christmas movies this season yet. If we're going to start watching the Christmas movies, that's like a December 20th midnight sort of start to me. You should see the new I Was Poisoned. Okay, one moment, please. Luckily, I still had the tab open. 
This morning, something from the buffet. Not sure. Yes, it was nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and intense abdominal pain. See, this is the shit that pisses me off. Okay, the picture is of um, a breakfast buffet where it appears that they had seven desserts. Okay? No, the gummy bear one? Well, this one's pissing me off. You can't go to I Was Poisoned and say something from this restaurant poisoned me. I don't know what it is. It all tasted fine at the moment. You could have gotten sick from any variety of sources and you're putting the Bacchanal buffet on blast. You don't have the, you haven't done genomic sequencing to, no, that you could get sued for the, like false misadvertising probably. No, the gummy bear one, Lil Nitro Gummy. It, the world's hottest gummy bear. It, it's on fire and has a fire extinguisher on the ad. It's very hot. My stomach is cramping like crazy and it feels like birth. <laughs> oh man. This, like, dude, we have to do better as a species. Sam's Club, ate this cake three different nights after supper. Not sure what ingredient did not agree with my stomach or other possibility. Extreme pain and vomiting from 2 a.m. to 11 a.m. Later evening, felt better, stupidly ate more. Same thing, now days later, I'm so sore. Bro, you're, you got like sicker than you've ever been in your entire life and you said, I'm going to risk it on the cake again? Like you're so confident the cake is what did it, that you were sending a message to iwaspoisoned.com. But you're also like... I am pretty hungry right now. Like, what are, you, what are we doing here? We have the tools as a society to, like, not fall victim to this. Now, I'll admit, okay, sorry, sorry to have done that, but it's, it's my bias that that cake was probably fine. It was probably some other shit that you ate. That's just my, it's my own personal bias. I'm not saying that a major grocery store is not going to give you food poisoning ever. I'm simply saying it's less like, Occam's razor is that you have lower health standards in your own kitchen that they have in the kitchen at the Safeway. That's all I'm saying. You ever have the health department come through your house? I think that they would shut your ass down. I worked at a grocery store. It'll change your mind. You haven't seen how fucked up I cook, okay? You don't know anything about the bedlam that goes on in my kitchen. Cutting the chicken before the vegetables, using the same knife, same cutting board. Cooking the uh, uh, raw chicken in the cast iron, using a wooden spoon to stir it around, using the same wooden spoon to sample the mirepoix for the soup. You don't know what it's like in there. I'm entering my plague arc. You gotta keep those digestive enzymes guessing, bro. Astria? DL Guiga is so funny to me that you like Astria. I can't, I thought I had you sort of like figured out. I thought I could pick you out of a line. And then you told me your favorite game of this year is Astria, six sided oracles. And you ju it's just a little curveball, it's just another wrinkle in the personality that it keeps you invested, it keeps you interested. Because I thought you were cool because you work in finance and you ride a Peloton. But then you're like, my favorite game of the year is like this nerd game. And I'm like, really? Finance is cool. So true, Squeaks. Welcome. Welcome. Unfortunately for DL Guiga, he doesn't work in finance. He works in economics. So he wouldn't know. By the way, do, DL Guiga, are you ever in Squeaks' chat? Or is this the first time you guys have met? Oh, is D.L. Guiga a streamer or something? No, he's just a guy that, like, rides a Peloton with me. <laughs> he insulted me once? Well, it sounds like he's familiar with you. By the way, I don't know if I committed fraud um, when I ordered from Papa John's. So, like, again, I, I got food poisoning last week. I don't know where I got it from. Uh, but it could have been from pizza that I ate, so I said... Notice, by the way, how I'm not on IWasPoisoned.com going, I got poisoned 100% by this salad that I got from a pizza place. Ugh. Anyway, um, so I said, just to be safe, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to try a new pizza place. It's not new, but it's you know, new for us. So I said, mm, I was Googling pizza near me. Uh, all the good pizza restaurants only delivered through DoorDash. It'll cost you like another 37% to get it to your front door. So I said, okay, we're going 90s mode. I went to the Papa John's website. I ordered a pizza. And then before I checked out, I just Googled Papa John's promo codes and found a website with promo codes 
And the one at the top, it was like, used by a thousand people today. And I put it in and it took $9 off of the price. It was like minus 25% or something like that. That's what you're supposed to do? That's crazy. They do say, a pen chat, is this true? A pen this guy told me a penny saved is a penny earned. Chat, is that true? Chat, is this true? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush? Me when I take my hand birds to the bush bird factory? Oh! <laughs> Slot machine sounds? We're eating good tonight, bro. Just doubled my birds at the bush bird factory. Bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Interesting. Never really thought about it like that. First time I've actually laughed at this stream. What the hell? Hey, Anel, would you say this is an unusual situation? I live in an island city of 30,000, and we have an insane person-to-restaurant ratio. There's literally like 11 burger places within two kilometers. That's what America is like to me. Anytime we're in northern Washington, I'm always like, it, it feels like the entire state outside of Seattle is just like the highway. And then out of nowhere is like a strip mall just pops out of the ether with like 11 different chain restaurants inside of it. And then you turn into it. And even though there's like 100,000 people in the town, there's 98,000 cars in the parking lot. Like you're, you'd think coming from Vancouver to like Bellingham, you'd be like, there's probably parking everywhere. No, you got to park on the other side of the damn highway. And I know that I'm kind of maybe leaning a little bit too much into my I Love America arc, but it's kind of amazing to me. I'm, it's not really like culture, but it is kind of crazy that like no matter where you go, there, you're only like 10 minutes away from a mall that has like nine different types of mid-cuisine in it. Like it's not going to be the best restaurant you've ever been to, but you know you're going to be able to get like a reliable meal that tastes like the thing that you want. Yeah, I think convenience gets a, at least a little bit of a bad rap. Like, sometimes eating in Vancouver is inconvenient as fuck. I don't want to wait 75 minutes for chicken and waffles just because the place went viral on Instagram. That shit is crazy. Laugh for it. Well, this one specifically goes out to Jam Cafe, but... <laughs> so good, though. Food was fine, and we didn't have to wait that long. But I was like, it, I left kind of feeling like brunch was a psyop. Is it, like, maybe this is hypocritical to say, but I think there's some meat on this bone lens still. Breakfast is, like, my favorite meal of the day, and yet simultaneously is, like, the meal that has... I think breakfast is, like, solved, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't... They've, they've done it all. It doesn't get that much better. There's no innovations in breakfast science that are coming. They came, like, they've invented the waffle 90 years ago, and then like the hash brown, and then like finally country gravy made it out of the southern United States to the rest of the world, and it's propagated. And then we got all kinds of, so we got Turkish coffee, Vietnamese coffee, Italian coffee, American coffee. Like, we're, it's done. We've got it all. It's all good. Now, I'm never like anti breakfast, but at the same time, I think I'm, I'm, kind of at the point where I'm like, I don't need to go to a brunch place ever again because I know what it's going to taste like. And it's going to taste good, but at the same time, like, there better be no lineup. That's all I'm saying. What do you mean baked beans is in number one? They are making new bacon. That's a good way to describe it. That would be the title of this special if it was on Pluto TV. They ain't making new bacon. What the heck you lining up for? They ain't making new bacon. People in the crowd. He's right, they aren't. Oh man, they made that stuff like a hundred years ago. I feel like there's still things for me to learn in like the lunch arts, you know? There's still lots of cuisines worldwide that I've, I've barely scratched the surface of. But breakfast, at least like North American breakfast, I think we got it all sorted out. We don't need any more brunch restaurants. I get it. Mimosas, a big bowl of gluten, French toast, chicken and waffles, biscuits and gravy. We got it all, okay? Baked beans. 
What are they talking about when they're... What were they smoking when they invented the full English, man? Just hear me, like, cause they... I think they ran out of steam halfway through. Sorry, I'm still build, building my tight five. They must have ran out of steam halfway through making the full English, right? Start with some toast. Good old fashioned foundation. I respect it. Some good bread, some butter, some jam, some peanut butter. Why not? Mm, breakfast meat, sausage, bacon. I love it. Some eggs, classic. Hash browns. Keep going. I'm almost there. Uh, three mushrooms. Huh? Three mushrooms? Where did that come from? Does, does the dude who owns the pub also own like a mushroom farm or something like that? Uh, half a tomato. What are we doing here, man? Uh, can of baked beans? A little congealed blood? Best I can do is a little bit of congealed blood. I'm getting minus two out of my freaking gourd, man. Get out of here. The, the more I get minus two, the more powerful I become. I'm just gonna keep speaking louder. Mantis is dog shit. In terms of like the animal kingdom though, it's gotta be one of the coolest looking animals that's ever existed on earth, right? It's literally like a tall bug with knives for hands or like swords for hands. That's cool, dude. That's like some Starship Trooper stuff. They should make a human sized one. No, they shouldn't, Satan. Sorry, I've always wanted to say that. He truly is a millennial. Did, I mean, as long as we're in the did you see this era, did you see the post that said, um, if any of you display this in your house unironically, I will kill you? And it's like the millennial like menu board with the calligraphy on it that says like, it's 12 different types of cursive writing. Romeo and Juliet is not a love story. It's a tale of two underage People who die, or it said something needlessly reductive of the sort. Did you see you got compared to Eric Ten Hag in an r slash soccer thread? I don't know what that means. I get, is Eric Ten Hag the name of a person, a team, or a stadium? You never know when it comes to Dutch, you know? It might be the name of a sandwich with sprinkles on it. He's just a bald guy. I thought that we were over this because the Steelers fired their offensive coordinator who was a bald guy named Matt Canada. That was a rough time for me. Then all of a sudden it turns out now I'm getting compared to the Manchester United manager. It never ends, man. Grow hair and it would end? I'm growing it right now, you just can't see it. And neither can anyone. <laughs> Well, that's not true. Sometimes I go like a week without shaving and then my wife is like, you are, she'll say something, I swear that this is true. She'll say like, you really are bald. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It hasn't just been like a 14 year sort of joke that I'm working to maintain. Like that's <laughs> the reason I shave it often is because when I don't, it's not there. I know it sounds a little backwards, but it's true. The balder you are until you're completely bald, the more often you should shave. Bald shaved is not the baldest you can be. The baldest you can be is you don't grow any hair anymore. That's bald. The second baldest you can be is you only grow hair in the horseshoe, but you let it grow. That's like the second baldest you can be. I'm the third baldest you can be, which is I shave myself bald. The more my hair grows, the balder I am. As, as I, it doesn't make sense, but it's true. Like, just ask yourself. If I showed you a picture of Jason Statham or, I, or George Costanza, sorry, side by side, who's balder? I don't know how to explain it. George Costanza is balder than Jason Statham. Jason Statham is obvious. If you, if you gave him the bald test, it would be like, this fucker's bald. George Costanza has a little hair, but somehow George Costanza looks balder. Now, George Costanza versus No Ho Hank from Barry. No Ho Hank is balder. 
than George Costanza. But George Costanza is balder than Jason Statham. There's like a, I, I don't exactly know how to write the, the test that makes these results come to pass, but I know the, what the results are. Come on, come here. I'll give you a little pet. I'll give you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just run right into all the chords on your way. Good idea. Great survival instinct. Okay. Now that you're here, you realize I've betrayed you. Look at this boy. Look at this boy. And now you'd think, he's like, I don't want to be here. But he's actually, he's cannibalized the space that I made to pick him up in the first place. I can't even move my chair back there. I do sometimes wish that I could speak to spiders. Because I want to tell them, like, I don't really have a problem with you. Two things, okay? If you're a spider, if someone could communicate this to the spiders, this would help me out a lot. Don't come into my house. I don't want to kill you. If my wife sees you, she's going to make me kill you. It's just as, it's as simple as that, okay? There's a, there's a hierarchy in the house. There's an order in the house. The spider's at the bottom, but I'm not at the top, okay? So if you value your own life, don't come into my house. Or at least stay out of sight. Secondly, stop building your webs. This is for self-interest. Stop building your webs across doorways. There might be like three days in a row that I don't like use the side gate, okay? But eventually I'm gonna walk through the gate. And I always just feel bad when I walk through the gate and like a spider webs on my coat. I'm like, brother, you shouldn't have put it there. That's like, like leaving a half full glass of water on the edge of the table. Like you're just asking for that shit to break. Build it up in the, in the corners. The corner is a great place for it. I'm not getting up in the corner unless my wife sees a spider there and then, you know, that's just, that's life. I got a half full glass of water on my desk right now. I'm not like a pet peeves guy. I don't really have too many pet peeves. If I do have one, let's get into the nitty gritty, okay? Let's get real. If I have a pet peeve about my wife, The half full glasses of, of water are one thing. It doesn't really bother me. How, librarian, how did you know where this was going so, so soon? She doesn't, she's not in the habit of putting the cap back on a bottled drink after she's opened it, but before she's done. Now, I, water bottle, soda bottle, anything like that, if it has a cap, I put the cap on it until I'm finished drinking it because I don't, it takes a second and it prevents a spill from happening. But my, mo uh, my mom, <laughs> sorry, I read a message in chat at the same time. My wife doesn't put the cap back on the bottle and it's just a, it's just a difference of habit, right? But one time she did have an open bottle of Soylent on her desk and she knocked it over upside down into her purse. And that's fine. She, she cleaned it all out and it, it's good as new. But I know she was most upset that I saw it happen because it gave me so much ammo. Like you ever like tell someone like you shouldn't do it like this and they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then it backfires exactly the way you told them it was going to backfire. Oh, man, that was like six years ago and I'm still <laughs> I'm still riding high on it. It doesn't happen very often. You got to take it where it lies. Don't worry, it's been long enough. I just happened to watch this bit yesterday. I understand. Dude, you're like the the valedictorian. You're, you're doing... Oh, I read the textbook this weekend. Just I was bored. Like, what the hell? I like to talk a big game, but I think if I owned a deli in New York, I would probably scoop someone's bagels for them. Because I would, might make fun of them, like, I'd be, like, at the dinner table later that night, and I'll be like, you won't believe what I did to this guy's bagel today. He wanted it scooped. But then I would do it, because you never know, he might be, like, a great customer for life or something like that. You know, everybody's got problems. That dude might be paying me, like, nine bucks a day, five days a week for, like, the next 30 years that he lives in the city. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm not just throwing... 
customers away like that. That's how you know that Delhi must have been good because they were not trying to retain their customer at all. I think I would scoop the bagel. I would not be eating the scooped bagel, but if they asked me, I would, I would scoop the bagel for them. I wouldn't do it. I hate food waste. All the anti-food waste Andes are dead to me, just so you know. And I'll, I'll have you know, when did, the, when did the shine come off of the rose? It's because all you motherfuckers are being so disingenuous to me when I said you should... <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it. I said I thought it was untowards of a person to split banana bunches in the store just because they only think that they need two bananas. And that's fine if you disagree. I've come to moderate my own opinion on it somewhat. I understand not everybody out there is capable of consuming six bananas a week. Some people have a resting metabolic rate of three calories a day and two extra bananas would just, they would be bloated. I get it. I get it. Okay. Ad hominem, ad hominem. Um, regardless, ev many people, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be trying to be honest. Many people said, unlike you, my words, not theirs, unlike you, I don't like food waste, so I only try to buy as much food as I need. Yeah, like, I don't fucking like food waste either, okay? Stop trying to frame it like you have the moral high ground because you buy less bananas. I'm not wasting bananas either. I'm eating that shit on the Peloton going 33 kilometers an hour and also zero. But I'm starting to think that, like, honestly, I like wasting food. I'm, somebody's got to keep these I don't like wasting food dudes in check, okay? If I got to be the villain for that, then so be it. Wow, you hate wasting food? What a radical opinion. I was actually raised to just throw out a lot of food for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know I've never met someone with that position before, that they just, they hate wasting food. Wow, that's so unique. I guess that means that all of your opinions about cuisine and groceries and cooking are right, just because you hate wasting food. Okay, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Take one egg out of the carton at the grocery store. No big deal. I hate, yeah, yeah, well, the other 11 eggs, you got no choice but to just waste them anyway. You know, just, you couldn't cook them instead of ordering DoorDash four times a week. Whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> we don't negotiate with chat terrorists, okay? Also, like, the scooping of the bagel, it's not food waste, okay? I mean, it is, like, on a literal sense, there's energy going into the compost. But the reason that it's remarkable is not that... Oh, 40 calories of bread ended up in the garbage can at a bakery that throws out 400 bagels a day anyway. The reason it's stupid is because you got the dude in the back going, and then the scooped bagel advocates are like, no, 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 you don't understand. The reason that I like a scooped bagel is because it's like 30% less calories. Yeah, because you're eating 30% less food. Like it's not a trick. That's just thermodynamics. The, the, you're getting beside, it's, I hate this shit where like, it's a, could be a funny discussion about the dude who scooped his bagel, but instead we got to get into the moralizing. Wasting food is bad, so fuck the scoop bagel guy. No, fuck the scoop bagel guy, because he's like 37 years old and he's making like a vlog about a deli that wronged him. Like that's a narcissist sort of behavior. But then secondarily, fuck him, because what's the dude at the back has got to scoop out the bagel for him like he's making dinner for his two-year-old? Like, come on. The food waste has very, very little to do with it. We're wa Nobody likes food waste, man. Even people that waste food, they have the best intentions. They go to the store, they buy the spinach. This week I'm going to eat salads instead of hamburgers. Uh, it's Monday. Uh, for my mental, a hamburger would be really good today. Uh, it's Tuesday. I know I said I was going to start the salads on Monday, but I had a hamburger yesterday, so I sort of started off on the wrong foot. I'll just get chicken tenders today. And then two weeks later, you got a big old bag of green water sitting in your fridge, you know? But your intentions were pure when you started. Stop with this, this needless... I hate food waste moralizing, okay? We're all tr trying to waste as little food as possible. Nobody likes m lighting their money on fire, not to mention the environment, but I'm just, I'm, I'm scared of the kind of conversations that you have where you can just say, I hate food waste, and people are like, you win the argument. I'm not gonna let you get off that easy, okay? I also hate food waste. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's discuss the particulars. Your ass better be composting, too. If your ass is out here moralizing online, I hate food waste. You better have a fucking compost. If you don't have a compost, I'm going to come over there. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take you to Costco. We're going to buy one of those kitchen counter composters that you could get. 
If I catch you talking about the environment and you're throwing your soda cans in the garbage, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. I've been out here for 12 years arguing with psychos on the internet, thinking that at the very least they were living according to their principles. And then it turns out they were LARPing the whole time. They're driving pickup trucks and throwing their banana peels and eggshells in the garbage can like it's 1952. Once I get out, there's going to be carnage. People lie here. Did you see that tweet that was like, people will really be like, uh, why would you vote when instead you could just firebomb a Walmart and then they don't firebomb a Walmart? That's what the internet's like, I'm realizing. Well, not everybody, but some people. <laughs> Have you ever firebombed a Walmart? No, I vote. I'm the guy on the left side of the, of the tweet. <laughs> I'm the guy that you're replying to. It's like, I voted today. And then all of a sudden, you're like shaming me for not committing like a violent incident. And I'm like, what violent incident did you commit? And they're like, oh, I'm sleepy today. I worked a double last night. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? We're, why can't we be friends instead of arguing with each other then? There was no need for us to, you know, end up on opposite sides of the equation here. Banter's been juicy today. I'd like to thank you for that, Mr. Um, you didn't, no wonder your daughter didn't enjoy baking cookies with you. You didn't even make your own homemade cookie dough, motherfucker. Think I forgot your name, Demon Lord Sparta. Capital D, capital L, capital S, green font. That was also me. Don't worry. The panopticon will turn its eye to you eventually, adroit theorist. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Target's locked. Bro, it's crazy that 99% of deli meat worldwide is consumed in sandwich form. But the deli meat is not shaped the same as the bread. I mean, if you have like a Kaiser roll or something like that, it fits. But most people are eating sandwiches either on long buns or on square bread. And almost all deli meat comes in a circle. It's just weird, man. It's not, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I'll keep eating sandwiches, but like, it would be nice if the meat was like bread shaped. Why isn't the bread meat shaped? Well, cause then I don't want to have circle toast. I'm sorry, toast requires triangles, which means you either need triangular bread or a square sliced in half diagonally. Hey, by the way, I used to be a consensus seeker. Now I'm not afraid to be a firebrand. Variety pack, Kirkland Signature, roasted and salted nuts. 10 individually wrapped packages of cashews, 10 individually wrapped packages of peanuts, 10 individually wrapped packages of almonds. I've been sampling, peanuts are the best nut. I got no problem with cashews, I got no problem with almonds. Peanuts are not getting the respect they deserve. People treat them as a compromise nut. They treat them like a consolation prize. Oh, you don't have cashews? I'll get peanuts. Nah, bro. They clear. I should move to Virginia. It's that simple. I've been talking about how much I love parking. 5.5 out of 10 quality restaurants. <laughs> Peanuts. Coca-Cola. I'm gonna buy a vest. I should move to the Midwest, man. I know Virginia is not really the Midwest. I guess it's the... Mid-Atlantic? I don't know what you call it. I should move to the Midwest, bro. The problem is, Canada doesn't have a Midwest. The Canadian Midwest is like Ontario. I'm sorry, it's, I don't want to insult Ontario. Ontario is also our New York. I think like Ontario outside of the greater Toronto area is the Midwest. Winnipeg? Yeah, but like, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but my ass is not moving to Winnipeg, bro. You ever see the, uh, you like watch a hockey game and whatever city the hockey game is in during the, when they come back from commercial, they always do like an establishing shot of a local landmark. I'll never forget when I was watching like, uh, well, like you watch a New York Rangers game. They're always like, look at this. It's 30 Rockets. The Empire State Building lit up nicely. Here's Madison Square Garden. I never forget. I was watching a Winnipeg Jets game and they just showed like a bubbling creek with nobody around it whatsoever. And I'm like, that's cold even for Winnipeg. Like there's gotta be something that they can show. 
Isn't there like a walking trail where like some people are doing a jog or something in the winter time? Like it's just a bubbling creek with snow on it. Would you, should I make this my title? Would you stick out your gut for the trivialer? <laughs> It's Monday, okay? Cut me some slack. For the Quizzler. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, man. Who said that first? The Quizzler. I see it from Bananakin12, okay? Mods, fill their stocking with Terry chocolate oranges right now. That's not even the... Now! You should have a Merry Christmas now. Well, not now, but like in 21 days. Bro, it's Monday Christmas this year? Ew. Oh, no, dude. Apollo, did you know that? It's Monday Christmas? Pack it up, man. As is often the case, we don't know what to play. So this time, we're going to play Sporkle. I'm just going to click on some random stuff. Uh, it's, I, this one's for you, America. Me, when I'm Hollywood and I'm making any movie. Well, it's just, uh, United States popular. Well, that's not true. They do make some movies for other countries. Have you ever seen The Meg? I think that one was for China and Australia. United States Population Quest. Starting in Maine, can you click the bordering state with the highest population to move around the country? Diagonal borders are valid. Thank you. It feels good to be seen. Maine. Then, so your ass is like Connecticut. Are, you don't, they don't border, brother, so it's got to be you. It's New Hampshire. You're New Hampshire, and this has got a little hook on it. That's Massachusetts. You've got to have more people than this. And then it's got to be New York. Okay, and then you got New York, New Jersey. New Jersey, deceptively large population. I'm saying that for you, Jay. But Pennsylvania, I mean, this is a tough one. Philadelphia is like the fourth or fifth, maybe like the seventh biggest city in the U.S. Pittsburgh, you know, a few hundred thousand, maybe, maybe more than that in the metro. Lots of people. I got New Jersey. New Jersey or Pennsylvania? Give me Pennsylvania, but no disrespect to New Jersey. Now, this is where it gets tricky. You've got, I, I think it's going to be Ohio. Let me just say that. Because you're like Virginia, West Virginia. You're Maryland. It's going to be Ohio. Okay. Now, Ohio, Michigan versus Indiana versus Kentucky versus West Virginia. I'm going to say that me personally, I think Michigan clears Kentucky and Indiana. And that takes us straight to Wisconsin. Ooh! <laughs> I forgot it still borders Indiana. Okay, take me back. This is a fun one, okay? Take me back. I was cooking, man. I was cooking. So you got Minnesota. This is Iowa, Missouri. And that's so it's going to be Wisconsin, Iowa, or Missouri. <laughs> oh, man. Missouri. Oh, <laughs> so you've got Oklahoma. Uh, this is where things get a little scuffed, huh? There's not a lot of people in Iowa, no disrespect. Not a lot of people of Ar in Arkansas and not a lot of people in Nebraska. So it's got to be this. Oh, we're going back to... Oh, they keep looping me, man. They keep looping me like Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh, Bruce Willis. I forgot, I, I was so focused on going west, I forgot we could head out back east. This is a good quiz, man. It's, you know what it is? Is It's actually like 40 context-driven questions in a row. Tennessee, Georgia, Florida. This forces us to go Alabama, then Mississippi. Louisiana or Arkansas, easiest choice of my life, Louisiana. Louisiana goes to Texas. Now, Texas goes Arkansas, Oklahoma, or this John right here. It's going to be this John. Wow! Really? Oklahoma has more people than New Mexico? This, I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. Everything here that's not Texas, I just think of as, like, land. And also, essentially everything, like... 
between Washington and Minnesota all the way down to like basically like Las Vegas versus the Northeast, which is very densely packed. Don't be mad. Isn't that why you live there is because you can fart without your neighbor texting you and being like, yo, keep it down over there. I thought that was like part of the selling point. I'm just stating facts. I'm not trying to like insult anybody's way of living. Ohio, Michigan. Me when I'm a Japanese tourist visiting Farmington Hills. Colorado versus New Mexico versus Kansas. We go Colorado. Colorado touches. It could be this. Don't, don't forget about that. New Mexico, Kansas, Nebraska, no shot. Um, Utah, Arizona is very populated. And then it must be California. There's five remaining. California touches Nevada and Oregon. That's crazy, bro. That's a tough decision. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, like, Oregon has a couple of cities. Not that big. And the state itself is densely po or uh, sparsely populated apart from that. But Las Vegas is a bigger city than I always think it is because I always think it's just the strip. But I feel like nobody else lives anywhere in the state. I got to go Oregon. And then it's Oregon, Nevada, Idaho, Washington. You got to go Washington. Washington is forced to go Idaho. Idaho. Which one of you fuckers is Montana? You're Wyoming, you're Montana. Wyoming is going to... No, wait, wait. This is where Warren Buffett lives. <laughs> Where does Warren Buffett live? Omaha, Nebraska? No, no, no. He lives here. Okay, because Nebraska kind of looks like an N. Montana's going to have less people than this square. You, I forgot about Utah! <laughs> I always, I'm like, I ruled it out earlier. Okay, we, we can do this. This is so doable. This would go crazy. If they have a European version of this, I will get like zero. <laughs> I always, I'm always stunned when they ask, like, what's the most populous country in Europe? And then it's like Russia. Arizona, California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Utah, Nevada. And that must be the, okay, look. Do a Canada one. It really, I mean, it really would just be a straight line. Where are we starting? Nova Scotia? Oh, no, don't. Dude, I was like, I don't know where that is. Okay, Nova Scotia goes to New Brunswick, which then goes to Quebec, Ontario. I'm going to go ahead and say that it goes Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Alberta, BC after that. Then Yukon versus Northwest Territories. We go uh, Yukon. No, really? The Northwest Territories have more people than the Yukon? Yeah, dude, no kidding. What are you talking about? Like, Whitehorse has, like, a tourism industry. I didn't know, like, I knew that there were people living in the Northwest Territories, but I would have thought, like, it was this, then divide by four. I'm honestly just impressed with myself that I knew where Nova Scotia was on the map. I know that's embarrassing, but I see the American map a lot more than I see the Canadian map these days, okay? Now, Northwest versus... Yukon versus none of it. It's Yukon, bro. It's Yukon. We take those. Okay, there's only 2,000 more people in the Northwest Territories versus Yukon. Look at this! I'm vindicated! For the first time in more than a century, the Yukon's population now outstrips that of the Northwest Territories. In figures released last week, Statistics Canada estimated the Yukon to have 44,975 people, three individuals more than the Northwest Territories, where the population was estimated to be 44,972 apologize to me. I wasn't wrong. The stats were wrong. Three guys just vindicated me. Okay, this is, if you, if you wanted to get your licks in, if you wanted to make fun of me, here's your chance, okay? Starting in Turkey. By the way, is this still, I know it's spelled differently now. Still pronounced Turkey? Sure, not really. Close enough. Basically, all right, whatever. That's right here. Okay, from there, oh no, I'm, Greece, 
it's got to be Greece, bro. Okay, Greece. And then you are, hang on, let me think, I got to think about this, because like you're, um, there's like Armenia, Georgia over here, there's Russia, that's Bulgaria, uh, Moldova, Bulgaria, Romania, Romania, Serbia, Romania, which one are you? is Hungary, <laughs> Switzerland, I don't know, man, just give me a second here, so it's like you, or Albania, <laughs> I gotta go you, okay, this is Bulgaria, let's take me to Romania, Romania, so you've got Moldova, Ukraine, Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is Croatia. This would be, this is like, this is Hungary. I feel like it's Ukraine, which would then take us to Russia. Now with Russia, you've got, see, now this is pissing me off, okay? Because do we, some quizzes count the exclave and some don't. If you don't count the exclave, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, I don't know, Finland or Belarus, maybe. If you do count it, it's got to be Poland for sure. Poland then goes to Germany, which is one of the most populous countries in the European continent. Germany probably has to go to France. Now, France has Spain and Italy, I feel like it has to be Italy, because if we go to Spain, maybe we could get out via Italy, but I don't know if there's gonna be 12 spaces left, so we go Italy. Italy, you go Switzerland, or Croatia, or Austria, or Slovenia. Well, it's not gonna be Slovenia. I think it's between Austria and Croatia. Oh wait, no, maybe Italy doesn't border. Croatia, in which case we go, Austria, now we've got, this is, this is not my strong suit, I believe that this is Czechia, and then <laughs> one of you is Slovakia, and then the other one is a different country that's not coming to mind right now, <laughs> I feel like it's probably Czechia. And then it must be Slovakia. And then it must be Hungary. I forgot about Korska next to, okay. And then you would go probably Croatia. Oh, but Serbia too. Hmm, that's a tough one. Croatia, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Serbia. Oh, and then I'm going to pick on the, I'm going to pick the country that's largest. I'm going to pick Croatia, which then takes us to Albania. I'm assuming. It's Bosnia and Herzegovina, which then takes us to Albania, Montenegro, which takes us to Albania, which then takes us to North Macedonia and Kosovo. He's fucking cracked. Did you see that? Did you see that? You know how many 50-50s I got right there? I honestly expected that that could take us like an hour. And I didn't even get that many countries wrong. <laughs> I got to listen... Down in the Balkans, I get a little confused sometimes, okay? Better than the Canada quiz? No, I was so good at the Canada quiz that I got it right. The quiz got it wrong. Like, I, I was better at that quiz than the person who made the quiz. Hey, here's one we should do. Worst countries to live in. Me trying to think of the country I'm going to say after North Korea. <laughs> Like North Korea, bam. Okay, what's next, guys? Um, 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 uh, uh, help me out here. Help me out here. GRE root words. I don't want to embarrass you, DL Guiga, by just getting 100% on the GRE root words test. This is really what you want from me? GRE root words. 146 plays, rating 0, 0.00 ratings. To be born. Nat. 
to do harm. I don't know, I gotta think about that. This is really what you do on the GRE? My friend had to take this in order to get into a Masters of Engineering program? <laughs> this is crazy. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to put, to carry. After, that would be post. Before, pre. All right. What do you need to get on the GRE? You gotta get like, um, like say about 21% and you pass. Seven out of 34, you got it, dude. <laughs> Why does academia have such a hard on for like Latin? You don't need to know this. I'm very pro education, but you just gotta, you know, the quiz should be like, how bad do you want it? Show up and learn on the job. That's it, man. It helps with knowing terms. I think it's all bullshit, brother. I think it's, I think the last living Latin speaker owns like the McGraw Hill textbook company and publishes the GRE root word testing manual. We're back at the top. I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble, honestly. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think seven is where I'm going to max out. And I think me doing this for the next 11 minutes is just going to be boring as fuck, brother. <laughs> Look, people in chat are saying this sucks. Based, agreed. This isn't great. You can keep your nuts, but I'm not finishing this quiz, okay? Fine, I'll do some damn history. Because only nerds are still watching this. I'll do the nerdiest category of all time that I do respect. You know how hard it is for me to not just play movie trivia over and over? I'm finding a, a good one. Because it is like, it's all American presidents for like the first 20. Recent editors picks. How about this popular people in 1926? Can you pick the people that were popular in 1926? This is kind of like movies and history maybe. This guy's got to be called like fatty something because this is the largest man that existed in 1926 without a doubt. Your ass is Houdini, bro. No. Houdini? Who got, who got punched in the gut and killed out of all of you? Hey, that's Harry Houdini, bro. That's Harry Houdini. Greta Garbo? Who the fuck is this, bro? I thought I was going to recognize your name like 100%. This is crazy. Okay, it's nuts on the table. I'm going to get five or more on this one. I promise it to you right now. Al Jolson. <clears throat> nuts on the table, boys. Harry Houdini. I'm actually, I thought 100% there would be a dude in here called Fatty something. It seems like so 1920s coded for this guy to be named like, like, isn't there a dude named Fats Domino? This dude's like 190. That's the biggest guy they got back then. You're Harold Lloyd. All right. Now this fifth one's going to be a stretch. Greta Garbo. It's you. Oh. Louise Brooks. Okay. Douglas Fairbanks. Now this is going to be hard. Douglas Fairbanks. Strikes me as you. You inherited a railroad from your grandpa, but you don't have the cojones to run it. No offense. Sinclair Lewis. Repeat. <laughs> Gene Austin. Gene Austin. Strikes me as a normal guy. This is the most normal guy of all time. Bobby, actually, you're a Bobby Jones. This is a Bobby smile right here. Valentino. George Olson. Baseball player. New York Yankees. And Tony Gowdy, probably this guy, scientist or something. Emil Jannings, Rene Lacoste. I beat the average. That's unbelievable. You're right. Lacoste does have a giant Lacoste logo on him. Bro, I wasn't alive in 1926, okay? I was doing my best. Now, watch this. You put popular people in 1996. Get ready for this. This quiz has been removed by Sporkle. I needed that one, bro. Dare I do popular people in 1936? Like, I don't know. That seems hard. 
Fred Astaire loved to dance. That's him right there. Bro, bro should have played Sinestro. He should have been at the club for real. He would have been a, an insane Sinestro, dude. Can you imagine him trapping Green Lantern in like a yellow prison and then making like a yellow dance floor and going like a tick a tick a tick a tick a tick a tick a You know what I'm talking about. Jesse Owens, okay? Marian Anderson, no disrespect. King Edward VIII. Fats Waller. See now. That's, dude, this must be Fats Waller. I'm sorry, it has to be. Margaret Mitchell, Bing Crosby. You can't miss this one. Everyone will make fun of you. You got to be Bing Crosby. Gene Harlow. Give me some time. I can get this. FDR. Dude, the 20s were cooked. The 30s go crazy, man. How about like 1986? I'm going to know them all. Nuts on the table. If I get less than 90%, chop my nuts off. Martina Navratilova. Bet you thought that would trip me up. Angela Lansbury. Lawrence Taylor. Bill Cosby. Corazon Aquino. Kim Basinger. Tom Cruise. Steve Gutenberg. Bet you thought I wouldn't know that. Anita Baker. Carol Alt. Falco. That must be you. Steve, uh, Stephen King. Diane Warwick. Diego Maradona. Anita Baker. All right, put your nuts on the table. I want to see... Okay, I can't really finish that sentence. I don't want to violate the TOS, but you better... I'm sharpening the machete. If I got to do 7,000 chops, I got to do 7,000 chops, okay? Oh, give me that. I have my fingers crossed behind my back. You motherfucker, you. I respect it. I respect it. Jags win by 20 tonight. Listen... I haven't had the greatest picks recently, okay? Luckily, I don't gamble. Let's see, Jacksonville, it's Monday Night Football. The Jaguars, are they ready for the bright lights? Let's see, Jacksonville Jaguars, who are they playing tonight? Bengals, Bengals, Sons, Joe Burrow. I gotta be real with you. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Trevor Lawrence and the, and the Jaguars are my lock of the week. I think they are going, I'm gonna say, me personally, I think this is a 31 to 10 win for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think that's a gimme. I think Eddie N. Jr. is going to go insane tonight. He's going to pop. I'm going to say he gets 937 rushing yards. What's the over set at right now? What's the line for the over? 90 yards? Bet the, bet the over on that one. He's going 10x that without a doubt. How many current NFL quarterbacks can you name? NFL QB. This is the quiz right here. Okay, you ready? I bet if I get over 12, I'm going to consider this a huge win for me because I would have gotten three last year. Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray. Oh, crap. Um, okay, Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, Carolina Panthers, Chicago Bears, Bengals, that's Joe Burrow originally, Browns, I know him. <laughs> it's the massage guy. D'Angelo Smith. Uh, <laughs> some, I, uh, if I saw his face, I'd be like, I know him. Um, Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott. Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson. Detroit Lions. Matthew Stafford. Detroit Lions. Green Bay Packers. Joey, Joey something. Joey? <laughs> King? No, okay. Texans, CJ Stroud. Colts, Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence. Kansas City Chiefs, you got Patrick Mahomes. Dolphins, Tua Tago. I've never had to write it before. Patriots. Saints, Giants, Jets. Well, the Jets' starting quarterback was Aaron Rodgers. Eagles, Jalen Hurts. Pittsburgh Steelers, Kenny Pickett. 49ers, Brock Purdy. F 
Deshaun Watson. <laughs> the guy in my brain got back to me. Lions quarterback is not Matthew Stafford. It's another guy. And I feel like I know the Patriots quarterback. He has a short name. It's like Blim Blom, something like that. And he's not very good. There's a car somewhere in here, David or Derek. Okay, yeah. And uh, I'm done. I pass on that. I pass on that. Okay. Of the one, I should have gotten Jared Goff. I do know that somewhere in my brain. I should have gotten Tuo Tego Vailoa, okay? I just, I, I've never had to spell it before. Now I'm familiar, Mac Jones, what did I tell you? Blim Blam, Blim Blam. That's a pretty, that's Blim Blam. That's a short name. I did pretty good, man. I thought I did a pretty good job. All right, Kate is live. I will send you over there. Enjoy, I know, average 90%. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Later. I'm in love with you And I don't want to take drugs with you anymore Cause this is a metaphor For the hypocrisy and androgyny Misogyny of the policies of Donald Trump Let's do a bump of cocaine You drive me insane But I'm giving it up again I'm done with the heroin Hey girl, let's fly from England to Paris Cause I'm really in love with you You know what I'm talking about?